In this day and time, people are faced with challenges. The challenges in life can make you or they can break you. It's a challenge just to get up every morning. It's a challenge to get up and go to work day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. It's a challenge just to be married. It's a challenge just to be single. It's a challenge just to get up, put your clothes on and go to church. Is anybody dealing with any challenges in your life? Challenges everywhere we look around at something that we face just living here on this earth. But there must come a time in our lives that even though there are challenges, we must make sound decisions. Decisions that determine our outcome. Decisions that determine where we're going to be day after day, month after month, year after year. That's why we cannot rely on our own minds. That's why we cannot rely on our own thoughts. We've got to rely on God. For the word said in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, it said, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. As you deal with the challenges of life, you need God to direct you. As you deal with the issues of day after day, you must acknowledge God's authority over your lives. In this day and time, people are sold out to something. We're in a time, as the scriptures say in 2 Timothy 3, the Bible says that this know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. What do you mean by perilous, dangerous, hazardous? Days full of risk for men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers. Incontinence, fierce, despises of those that do good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. Anybody know what time we're in? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, the word says, turn away. People have become sold out when it's okay for women to marry women and men to marry men and get children and adopt them and raise them as a family. Our world is in trouble. People have become sold out when children and young people are willing to sell drugs at any cost of losing their lives for quick money. People have become sold out when they will look you in the face and blow your brains out without a second thought. We are in perilous times. People have become sold out when they will break in your house, when you're sitting right in the house to get what they need. We are in dangerous times. People have become sold out when they are walking up in schools and even in our churches and shooting people, innocent people down and shedding blood across. 
cross. Oh, people are sold out when the September 11 event happened. Those people that took over those planes and drove them into the World Trade Center, they were sold out to what they believed. They wanted to do what they wanted to do at any cost because they were sold out. As I begin to read the word of God and also see what is going on in our society, we are in trouble. We are in a dangerous time. If the world can be sold out to sin, what's wrong with us that are getting dressed to come to church? You come to the conferences. You go from place to place. If the world can be sold out, what's wrong with the church folk? Help me, Holy Ghost. What's wrong with those that say we are saved, we are sanctified, we are filled with the Holy Ghost? What's wrong with you? We can't get you to get up and go to church for the God you say you love. We can't get you to even fast. We can't get you to pray. We can't get you to love one another. We can't get you to pay your time and your offering. We can't get you to use your gift for the Lord. What is wrong with the church if the world is sold out? The answer is Jesus Christ. If God has come into your heart and brought change into you, we ought to see some sign. I shouldn't hear your talk and see a different walk. I shouldn't hear what you do and you live in another thing. What about your commitment to what you believe in? In this hour, we need to be more than just available to God. There is a difference between being available and being sold out. What do you mean by available? Available means ready for use at hand. Available means to be accessible. Being ready at hand. Being accessible. Well, then we must understand what sold out is. Sold out means something that was once available. Hear me. Something that was once available or accessible is no longer available or accessible for a particular use. What are you trying to say? I am available to God. I am accessible, ready to be used. But I also must be sold out. What do you mean when I sell out to God? I am available. I am no longer accessible for the devil. We have a lot of available church folk, but we have very few that are sold out. 
gentlemen, you have availed yourself for the cause of Christ. You have made yourself ready every time they need you in your church. Every time the doors open, you're right there. But every time the devil tempts you with lying, you find yourself lying. You have availed yourself. Every time it's time for the devil to use somebody to sow seeds of discord, you are accessible. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Every time, oh, the devil needs somebody to keep up confusion in the church, in the church house, in the conference, in the work of God. There's always somebody that's acceptable that the devil will creep in and use that one somebody. But I hear God say, I need some people that will be so.
9.37 on last Monday. And I told God one day, God, I'm going to just give my life completely. See, it's something about us church babies. We think we know the way and the way we do know, huh? We act like we got the monopoly on the church. But if you're not careful, your church babies are going to go straight to hell from church. Ignorance. 
dangerous. But it says, but as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy. We have messed this thing up about holiness. We think holiness is the fire baptized church. We think holiness is the church of God in Christ. We think holiness is these are the denominations that are doing the things and speaking in tongue and rolling. We call those the holiness church. But holiness is not a denomination. say they were they believe that if they gave their life up for their cause they will be saved here it is here it is we the church people the saints of God have the true and living God Jesus is the answer and we say that he lives in us but the world don't believe it because of where you are and what you're doing and God says I need to bring a change in the heart of my people the 
harvest is right. The people are ready to come. The prostitute is just walking around in the corner, paying back and forth, wanting to come. But where can God send them? Where you won't turn them away. The drug addict, it's time the drug addict is ready to give them away.
understand it because I gotta get out of here you must understand that destiny is your ultimate outcome one thing about the devil he may not know all but he knows enough to try to stop you he knows enough to try to keep you from living holy you wonder why every time you go to the altar you're praying over the same stuff you pray God deliver me over the same stuff you say Lord I need you to deliver me you come to the altar and say God help me but the next hour 
in Jesus? Who sinned? Did he sin? Or did his parents sin? But the word say, Jesus responds for us. Neither had the parents, nor this man sin, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. What are you saying? Whatever you go through, it's for God to be manifest in you. It's not about what it is. He wants the glory in your life. He wants the glory through. Tell somebody through. He wants the glory through and he wants it in what you're going through. But one thing about it, when I got pregnant in the church as a single woman, evangelist, the devil came to church to trip me up, but the devil thought he had the best of me. I sat down, but when I got up, after having my son, this is my son, he's 10 years old, but when I got up, my pastor at that time was Derek Hutchins, and Derek Hutchins said, he said, I don't care what y'all church folks say, I'm going to still use because God has need of her, I may be broken, but Oh, 
and sister. Stand right here, Elder. Come here, Elder C. John. Prophet. Stand right here. Thank you. Stand right here. Come here, husband. Come here, baby. Stand right here, Elder C. Oh, my boss. Come here, Darius. Come here, Pastor. I gotta show you what happens. For my mama's sake. Come here, Darius. Yes, your baba Stand right here, Pastor. Oh, Tabahosa. This is your path to go through. My destiny is to get over to the organ. These people represent my situation. They represent my circumstances. They represent my affairs. They come in all different sizes and all different shapes. The thing about me on my way through and look at what I have to go through. It's called the process. The process. The steps taken to get to a goal. We're all in the process. The steps taken to see our Father. The steps we have to go through to get to where God is. These are our circumstances in our situations turn and face me I am now faced with my situations and right where I stand I can't even see my destiny but I know on the inside of me I gotta get there Whether it was by dream, whether it's by prophetic word, most of us have already seen where God is trying to take you. You've seen a little bit. Then He brings you back to reality, said, Now live it. See, the problem with us as a people, we're looking for a prophetic word. But after you get through shouting, speaking in tongues, and falling out over the prophetic word, you got to get up and live it. You want to rejoice? Oh, I got a, oh God, I got a prophetic word. Sis, pinch yourself. Brother, pinch yourself. You got to live it to get there. These are the things through. The things I have to go through to get to destiny, my ultimate outcome. Sometimes taking the steps, I get to a thing and get blocked. I'm trying to get around it. See, like everywhere I turn is with me. The more I pray, oh Lord, the more it's still sticking with me. Hey, God is helping you today. When you get to a place, and some of you get to the place, but you just want to say, I give up. I can't take no more. Some of you right there. I cannot take anymore. But down on the inside, purpose keep bubbling. Still feel that calling, pulling you. Feel, you still feel that anointing turning it over, turning in you. You must up enough strength to get past it. The problem with church, what we got? Get the shot, and I made it, but when you turn around, We want to rest after a victory.
victory. And the devil is still trying to stop you. Here I am faced with another thing, another circumstance. Trying to get to my destiny, oh my God. Is bigger than I am, stronger than I am, wider than I am. But I hear the scripture say I can do all things. Through Christ. Which strengthens me. We want to feel like, oh, that's it. Church feel the anointing of God, speaking in tongues, shouting and rejoicing. Around the corner, another thing. There's not one thing, there's not two, it's ten more. This is my brother, so sometimes things seem like they overtake you. They weigh you down. Strength is about gone. Don't even feel like praying. You become weary. What do you mean by weary? To be worn out in strength. To be worn out in energy. To be worn out in freshness. To be completely exhausted. The enemy wants to wear you out. But I heard the scripture says, and be not weary. In well doing. For in due season shall reap. If you faint not. You can't faint. What do you mean by faint? Means to lose consciousness or awareness to what's going on around you. God said in Luke 18 and 1, men ought to always to pray and not faint. You cannot lose consciousness to the snares and the traps of the enemy. That's why you must pray or you will faint. Things. Things. Everywhere I go. Things. Circumstances. Situations. Are wearing me like my clothes. This is my fine husband. They're wearing me. Like my clothes. Things. Thought I had gotten through this. But it looks like the same thing again. Things. Things. God, I can make it. Things. I gotta get to my destiny. I feel like throwing in the towel. Every time I try to explain to people, they just don't understand. They just knew what I was feeling. They just knew what I was going through. If I just could put it in words, have you felt like you just couldn't put it in words? If I tell them, they look at me crazy. They think I'm losing my mind. The problem is, I hear destiny calling me. I hear destiny calling my name. And I can't allow these things to cause me to throw in the towel. But I heard the scriptures say that I am more than a conqueror. Love God. More than a conqueror. I've overcome some things that seem like I was able to, wasn't too much able to handle. Now I come to a thing that looked like I could handle this thing. But this thing got me that I can't move forward. Still 
Yeah. <laughs>
seated in heavenly places quickly I'm going to ask my two daughters to come and just bless you with a song and then are you ready to go up to the mountain and to take what belongs to you give somebody a high five and say I don't know about you but I'm ready to take what belongs to me come on somebody I can't hear you in the house I can't hear you in the house shout somebody hallelujah Welcome them with a clap offering, please. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Come on, I can't hear you this morning. Is God good? Has He been faithful this day? Come on, somebody stand to your feet and give God the glory! Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! 
We just want to come and just bless you with a song that says he'll do it again. No matter what you're going through, you know that God is faithful. You know that he's been there. And he will do it again. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be down and feel like God has somehow forgotten that you are faced with circumstances you can't get through. Right now it seems there's no way out. You're going under.
go ahead and give God a better praise. You may not know how and when, but He's going to do it again. Before you are seated in heavenly places, give somebody a high five and say, God is going to do it again. Come on, somebody, and shout in the house before you are seated. Hallelujah. I do give honor to God seven, the honorable Thomas D. Jakes. Hallelujah. Somebody, yes, go ahead. We have all kinds of materials on seven strategic levels of prayer. Prayer is not an option, but a decision. Pray pray till something happens the supernatural powers of a praying man the incredible powers of a praying woman something happens when women stop crying and begin to pray the price of greatness if you can pay the price you can have it binding the strong man Jesus said in every family city community there is a strong man you can bind the strong man and have the victory. Look at somebody and say, you can bind the strong man. Binding the strong man. Divine timing. That's time to make an impact. Praying through your prophecy. Praying through your prophecy. We got all kinds of open heavens. Open heavens. You can pray the heavens open. We got it on CD, DVD, video at gate D, section 127, gate D, section 127. If you just pass by the product table, I'll be there signing and autographing the books. You can pass by and get some of these keys. Jesus said, I give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And if you have those keys, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatsoever you lose on earth is lose in heaven. But you can't bind and lose unless you have keys and key stands for knowledge. And knowledge is the acquisition of information. Acquisition of information. And so you need information in order to have knowledge. Wisdom is the ability or the power to use or to apply knowledge intelligently Wise understanding is the ability to acknowledge at the outcome of an event as it relates to a bigger picture. So get understanding and get wisdom and get knowledge and it shall be well with you. Somebody say, I hear you. Well, this morning, before we get into the word, I want to acknowledge my wife uh, out here. Just give God a praise and a big clap offering for my wife out there. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. That is my baby. I said to somebody the other day, I said, one of the things that makes this ministry unique is the fact that the man over this ministry is not a boy or a man, but he's a father. And the, the word father means source. The word father means source. And as a father in the house is the source where love, protection, and security comes for the entire family. You don't have to do anything more than uh, is expected of you because a father loves everybody anyway and, and knows the ability and the capability of everybody and don't expect you to do anything more than you can do uh, and so you can just be yourself. So uh, just let me be myself this morning and bless you. You ready? I'd like to talk to you this morning before we go into serious praying and praying for the sick. I'd like to talk to you this morning about a subject I entitled the spirit of Elijah the spirit of Elijah uh, look at somebody and say you can have the spirit of Elijah ah uh, yes you can have the spirit of Elijah turn your Bibles with me if you please to the last book of the Old Testament the last book of the Old Testament Malachi Malachi the fourth chapter Malachi the fourth chapter reading from the fifth and the sixth verse of Malachi the fourth chapter reading from the fifth to the sixth verse behold I will send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord 
and I will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers lest I come and smite the earth with a curse let us pray thy kingdom come father and thy will for every individual life under the sound of my voice as it has been already determined in eternity before time appointed be done let blind eyes be open let cripples walk let the dumb hear let the lame walk let the bound be loose let all kinds of sickness disease and infirmities be healed in the name of he who died laid in the grave and arose triumphant on the third day jesus christ the son of the living god somebody said amen the bible said that before that great and dreadful day of the lord god said i will send elijah and specifically what he's referring to here is that i will send the spirit of elijah because elijah didn't die he was translated and sent up into heaven but we want to find out what is the spirit of elijah because the bible talks about the spirit of elijah and the power of elijah and we want to find out what the spirit of elijah is now there are three comings in the coming of the lord jesus the first coming when he was born and came to earth he did not appear in the clouds of glory because the, the right of entry to the earth, the legal point of entry to the planet is the womb of a woman. So you cannot come to earth to contact human beings or to come among the human race of earth unless you come through the womb of a woman. And that's why Jesus himself had to be born to come in legally to the planet to have access to men and women like you and I now in the first coming of Jesus the spirit of Elijah came through John the Baptist to precede him the Bible said the voice of one that cries in the wilderness make straight the way of the Lord and create a highway in the desert and the bible said every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be brought low then shall the glory of the lord be revealed and i came to tell you that there are valleys in your life that must be exalted and there are mountains and hills that must be brought low and there are crooked paths that must be made straight and you need some highways in the spirit in order for the glory of the lord to be revealing your life if you hear me shall i hear you the bible said that before jesus would come on the scene the spirit of elijah had to precede him number two there are three comings the first coming was when he was born the second coming is when he returns in the clouds of glory and his feet will not touch the earth he will be suspended in the clouds of glory and the church will be raptured to be with him now before that second